So now, cookies might be a simple example because if you can, you know, you as a single person, you can buy five packets of cookies and then you can like arrange them in a line and it becomes a curve. But what happens, let's say, if I were to try and construct a demand curve for Apple computers? Now, each Apple computer costs $3,000. And even if I lower it to 2009, you're going to say, no, I'm not going to buy another Apple computer just because it lowers to 2009 from 3000 So how am I going to construct a downward sloping demand curve? Well, then don't think of it as a single person because the demand curve is never meant for a single person. The demand curve is meant for a market. So let's put this in perspective. Imagine you're from a school. The school has a population of 1,000. So if I sell the Apple computer at $3,000, then maybe 100 people will buy it in your school and each of them buys one. Now, if I lower it to 2009, then some other people might say, hey, hmm, I think this is quite a good deal, so I'll join in. And 120 people buy it. And so, if you lower the price of Apple computers more, more, and more, and more, and you chart this progress, you realize that, well, again, you can form a line. So it's not just about a single person, it's about a market. And when we connect all these lines, it, it becomes a demand curve for the market. So this is how you construct a demand curve for every single thing in the world.